Yes! We have animals! <laughs> I'm so excited to see things with heartbeats other than Crested Franklins and Craig and I. We've got many hippos and it seems to be quite busy this afternoon at Chitwa. I don't know, there was some kind of dispute going on just a moment ago. Um, at first I thought that maybe it was a female because she, was, she looked quite excited and she was sort of w wading her way through the shallow water and then there was a big male in hot pursuit and he looked quite keen um, and then anyways if this was the case she turned and lashed out at him and then he went and moved away <laughs> he went to, into the naughty corner but it's very busy around there but that's not all we've got to see what we will do is we'll try and head over and get closer we do need to reposition but we, what we're going to look at there's a couple of things around here first I found our nest again our little three-banded plover remember we saw that the other day now I am happy to report that all two eggs <laughs> was it all three both eggs that uh, the lapwing not the lapwing the plover was sitting on are still there and they're still looking good condition and I don't know if this is the male or the female now but they both sit on eggs both of them or incubate them and then they also help raise their young but it, I don't you know this isn't a problem now is I don't know when they're going to hatch because we only spotted them a few days ago and I don't know if they were laid that day or a few days before but typically the incubation period is about 28 days so just shy of a month or so so it's quite a while so hopefully if we come here a couple of times a week and we'll be able to follow them and, and hopefully both of these little ones make it but and we should have a nice window too I think uh, the sort of fledging period is about what about four weeks four and a half weeks give or take I think it's quite similar to that of the blacksmith lapwings but how great is that now there is more act more than just the bird action today we've even got Vladimir the crocodile laying on the island just resting up not as big as the monster crocs you've been seeing with James that are taking on adult zebra this one's just taking on the rays of the Sun at the moment basking about keeping nice and warm that's quite funny I love the way that the crocodiles lay with their legs sort of down next to their bodies it always looks like they're so uncomfortable Now machine gun nest, you're wondering how far away do crocodiles stay from the water? Now, just like hippos, well no, I suppose not just like hippos, it depends on what's going on with the environment. So with crocodile, they spend most of their day in the water, they come out and they bask as well to get nice and warm. And their food sources are typically in the water, typically they feed in the water too. Yesterday James was discussing about, uh, I think it was a Facebook Live that he'd done, uh, was discussing how crocodiles actually store uh, sort of meat underneath rocks and things like that. So they don't typically store any food out on land that I'm aware of. So a crocodile like this can move quite far away because we've definitely seen either Vlad or Boris, I'm not sure which one, all the way down at Gwari Pan. We've seen them in Twin Dams and Biffles Hook Dam, if I'm not mistaken, too. And that's quite a distance from here. As a crow flies, I must say it's probably about 10 kilometers or so, something along those lines. But I reckon that was also because it was quite dry. It was quite, it, everyone was quite desperate. Craig, can we get, before it hides away, I, oh no, there's a gymnogene. Oh. And I know we've been dying over the last couple of days to try and find a gymnogene. Every I know a couple of you have said on, on Twitter, in fact, hope we get to see a gymnogene today. The guinea fowl have been going crazy sort of behind us. I think the gymnogene flew from one of the trees, obviously went around. They panicked and started alarming. The Egyptian geese now just gave off an alarm call. It's just set up in a, um, I think it's a sausage tree actually from here. It's difficult to tell, but we can't see it now. It's on the other side, but maybe we get a chance to see it. Who else have we, who else have we got around? here that we can do because before we have to move oh we've got our friend the fish eagle our friend the fish eagle is up in the up in the tree of course where it normally sits it's sort of quite easy to try and spot the fish eagles they have their their favorite perches of course and that's a good spot over there you can still hear the guinea fowl shouting about they're very distraught they take a long time to calm down those birds but this fish eagle is just sitting up. It's actually not looking at the water at all. It's looking in a completely different direction. Oh, that's fantastic. Great close up, Craig, <laughs> of a fish eagle defecating. I wonder if it's going to fly. Yes, you are. Now, where are you going to go? We need to watch it carefully because we had that amazing sighting the other day 
Oh, that's going to be beautiful. Silhouetted against the sun. Wow, we. And that's it. <laughs> that's as far as Craig's can turn the camera, unfortunately. But that was quite nice, flying off and into the sun. Maybe it's going to come back with perhaps a little present in the form of a bird or a fish. But it has flown away from the water. I can't actually see where it's gone now at all. Right, who else have we got? There's lots of hippo action this afternoon. There's two bulls down that way that were splashing about, but they've settled down now. But at this time of the day, it always all the animals get quite rowdy. I think what we're going to do now is I'm umming and ahhing which way to go, but I think we might go down to the main pod of hippos, find a spot that's got some signal. Maybe we see that gymnogene too, which I'm sure you'll all appreciate. Let's go back across to Kenya, though, who has finally got some buffalo, an animal that's not around on Juma at the moment.